Hello everyone, welcome back to Dicebreaker, where today uh, I'm going to be doing a little solo painting. I'm just going to make it so that you can hear my music as well, because I've got some royalty-free lo-fi hip-hop, which is everyone's favourite tunes. Uh, let's see, so we want that on this one, I believe? You hear that? No? Where's that coming out of? One second. Yeah, headphones. Should be working. Let me just check this. Uh, that one? Is that working? Yeah, there we go. A little bit of music. Alright, how's everybody doing? Welcome back. I've got a very nice setup here. So I'm, I'm in the new flat. Um, if anyone doesn't know, I've moved. But I've got uh, my little sort of painting box here that I showed off on the other stream. And look, I've got like a live... See, this is way better. This is much better uh, visuals for everyone to be able to see. So I can hold this right up and we can get some, some nice details. Or we can uh, go down here. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna grab, oh God, I just realized I don't have a color palette thing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry, this is the first one I've done in here in a while. Uh, or ever rather. It's the first painting stream that we've ever done in this flat. But how's everybody doing? Welcome to uh, Danea, Kobe Morris, Felix Rollhausen, Rollshausen, uh, Alex Starslayer, Nathaniel Levy, Alex Slingska, Xenogill180, Jerome Debian, Tabletop Finder, Brian Shona, Kobe Morris, Dave Vatron Labosta, and, and Nathaniel Levy again. How you all doing? All right, let's get some uh, let's get some brushes out, shall we? Right. So, I think I'm absolutely gonna need for this one. I've got this big boy brush. Yeah, here we go. Uh, which I think is going to be really useful for the wings. So I'm going to give that a nice wash right now because it's not been used in a little while, so it's a little bit crusty. I'm just going to give it a little, little rinse. Let me know what the audio levels are right. I like, by the way. How's everybody doing? What are you all working, working on today? Hello, Angel B. For those of you here for your first time, this is Dice Painter Live, where we uh, we do a little bit of, of hobbying. I'm a big miniature painter. I love painting minis, so... Every now and again, every sort of two weeks or so, we'll just take some time out, do some painting. We've had Liv on some recently, and she's been learning how to paint. Um, but today it's just me. Liv is off on holiday. Ooh. Is that my phone buzzing? Yeah, I've just turned it off. Um, yeah, Liv is off on holiday. Lodis is working on some, uh, I believe working on the Discord, actually, which is quite cool. So look out for those. If you are not already, you can actually join us as a member now. Uh, so have a little look at the join button at the bottom of the screen, because... It'll tell you all the details. Hello, Zoe. Don't forget your glasses. Zoe, how good does this setup look? Look, hold on. Let me get my tray out of the way. Look. Look at that. Look at that. How good does that look? I was telling her to, to join the stream so she could look at how cool the camera setup was. I think it looks amazing. Um, right, yeah, let me put my glasses on as well. Sorry, there's a lot of things happening. Zoe, could you grab me, like, some scrap paper or something that I can put some paint on, please? That would be very, very handy. Because I forgot to get some. I'm putting on my I'm putting on my hips glasses. There we go. Let's give ourselves some uh, give, us, give ourselves some some support. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Oh no, is that paper? Like tissue paper? Yeah, no, I need like like a post-it note or something. Or is that what... <laughs> you can talk by the way. It's fine. <laughs> She's like miming at me trying to help. Thank you. Uh, okay, all right, cool. So let's kick this thing off. I'm gonna be starting. Yeah, that works. Little envelope. Uh, not yet. Ready? Yeah. Steady. Whoa. <laughs> I think you've forgotten how paper works. The ed edge of the camera is here, so you've got to lift the room. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, B. Right, okay, cool. So we've got a little little bit of palette paper as well. There we go. I really need to get, like, a wet palette thing. Um, yeah, the cameras look lovely in this lighting as well. Thank you for saying so, Alex. Okay, so what, what we're going to do first is I'm going to grab my big brush. Uh, we'll give that a little wash because this is the first time it's been used, actually. And I'm going to grab some Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to do like a light wash all over the armor. Uh, so, well, Zoe's not really dressed for stream, so she doesn't really want to be on right now. <laughs> Wasn't expected to be on camera today. Okay, here we go. So we're grabbing some Agrax Earthshade. Oh God, which way do I want? I've flipped it, so yeah, there we go. So this is a Citadel Shade. It's probably one of the best shades they do. Um, it's like a sort of earthy brown color. 
So we're going to grab some of that first. I'm just going to start washing some of the armor. So obviously we've got we've got like some some detail on the base here. So we've got like these stony steps. We'll probably do that last. I've also got this big branch coming around the bat, which looks amazing. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on Andressa herself. So we've got the wings to do. We've got the armor. And we've got this sort of cloak at the back as well, as well as some like adornments at the top. But first, I'm going to grab my Agro XF shades and we're just going to start washing over the armor which is going to get all those nice shadows popping out, which is going to look lovely. So this um, this model has been based in a Games Workshop color called Rune Lord Brass. Uh, and it's got this really nice sort of like warm silver color to it. Because usually when you think brass, you think sort of like coppery, but this is actually really quite light, quite gentle brass. And I think it looks really nice. With a nice Agrax, Agrax wash. It's just going to bring out all those shadows, and it's just going to look, it's going to look beautiful. Uh, we shouldn't be buffering 14. I've got, a, I've got a strong connection here, so it should be okay. But let me know if anyone else is running into problems, and I'll have a look at the YouTube back end. But yeah, it says excellent connection on my side, so we should be okay. But this is a really, really lovely model. I'm, I'm really into... I don't know what it is. When I started playing Magic the Gathering... Um, the uh, the angel cards all just look fantastic. When you think angel, you think really boring, like sort of, oh, I'm an angel, I love God, uh, which, <laughs> which is really dull. But they're very like war between heaven and hell, like battle angels and Valkyries and stuff. They all look amazing. So I'm big into that vibe. The Valkyries obviously are incredible. Um, so that's the kind of vibe that this, uh, this model has, which is why I'm really, really into it. Um, and when we were, so me and Liv played a game with the Dominion box, obviously, and I was like, I know you're the one playing Stormcast, but do you mind if I paint it drastic? Because I really want to paint her, because she looks really cool. But yeah, let me know what the setup's like, by the way. I'm I think it looks really nice. I was like, just messing around, trying to figure out a good setup here. Because I've got my little painting box, it's just like a nice little mount for the webcam, so I can get right up close. It's great, so I can show you what I'm doing. I'm just washing at the moment, so it's not going to be like a massive amount of detail that you're going to spot, but... We're getting all of the all of the little crevices of that sword, for example. I actually quite like going quite heavy on the sword because you get like a nice shadow on one side of the blade. Like that. And then you can just get a bit more definition. But it's just pulling a little bit in there in that recess, so we want to pick it up a little bit. Sweet. So that's how I wanted to start things off. That's going to take a little while to dry. Just a few more bits there. But now I need to start thinking about the color palette for this. So I've kind of come in blind, like I've not really decided ahead of time what I want to do with this model. Um, the only thing I've done is, is based it, obviously, but it was kind of just the colors that we had at hand. But actually, I'm really, really pleased with the, the color that it came out as. Um, and then when Liv did her first painting, she just painted straight over all of it. So that was good. I was like, well, OK, that's a nice color. But yeah, no, OK, all right, fine. <laughs> Here we go, right, so it's gonna be very subtle on camera, but you can see the, like, in contrast to the steps, for example, you can see that she's got way more sort of definition on her armor, which means you're gonna see a lot more of the shadows of the of the bits popping out. But obviously when she's all the same color, it's gonna seem a little bit more, uh, a little bit more difficult to pick out on camera. Angels, does that mean Wheels is Boros then, says Kevin Morris? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to start with that. And we're going to pop this close. Um, Alex says, so I'm working out what creative thing to do whilst I watch. Yeah, what are your options? Let me know what you were. What do you want to do? Because uh, you don't have to paint miniatures. You know, watching the stream. It's obviously it's nice to to paint together, but if you wanna you wanna do some sewing, some knitting, if you wanna do some baking, like whatever, just do something creative for these two hours. I think they're a nice little excuse to just do something with your hands, you know, do something a little bit creative. So with my other Stormcast models, I've gone for a sort of like purple cloak. So I might sort of carry on that aesthetic just so it matches the other ones that I've painted um, 
But normally I go for like a standard silver armor, but with this brass, I think we can get a bit more creative. So I think with this, she's got like this little scale mail pattern here underneath some of the like sort of joints, like under her hips and under her shoulder. Um, so I think I might, yeah, go for like a sort of silver pattern there and keep the bronze or the brassy color on top. And then maybe just some just very, very small, fine gold details every now and again. So, so for now, let's just grab, I'll pull out my little paint drawer. Oh God, I love this thing. <laughs> I talked about this on a, on a previous stream, but I love this little box so much. It's so good. I think that one's the, the nicest one right now. So we'll put that out. Felix rolls and says, Hi Wills, does the Dice Rigger team have any plans for Essen Spiels? So, actually, yes. Um, we've not really talked about it publicly yet because it's not 100% confirmed. Like, we haven't bought tickets or anything. Um, but we want to go out as a whole team as sort of like the first event post-vaccination. Because by the time that that rolls around, um, we should all be double vaccinated, which means that we should be safe to be going out and and uh, doing things in the public. And with Essen's policy on making sure that everyone is vaccinated um, before they come in and or passing passing negative with a COVID test and things like that, seems like the safest one to go to. Um, so, yeah, obviously we're thinking about you know, things like UK Games Expo and stuff, but it didn't seem quite safe. And also, like, there wasn't as much stuff going on there. But Essen seems like the good, like, a good sort of, like, um, starter event for us to get back in the swing of things, you know? So that's what we're thinking. We're hoping to all go out as a team, but we'll, we'll see what happens, basically. So keep your ears to the ground. Uh, but in the meantime, let's paint this cloak. Yeah, so Games Workshop does this lovely, lovely purple. Uh, which they actually call Screamer Pink, um, which I'm a big fan of, and that's sort of like the base color that I use for most of my most of my models in my Stormcast ones that I've painted. Uh, I can probably get a little example actually at some point of like another model that I've painted in this style, so that we can have something to base our stuff off of. Let's see what everyone's doing today. So. Alex says, I already made something today in the kitchen, which I just ate some of. I could needle felt or draw. Needle felt? That's interesting. I think my mum does some needle felting. She's very crafty. Um, she also, like, bakes and, and knits and, and everything. She's, she's like, the classic mum. Like, she does everything. Uh, like, every one of her grandkids has, um, like, custom knitted jumpers and stuff. Like, she's the uber, uber mum. There we go. It's just a lovely purple. It really is. I absolutely love this purple. A screamer pink, it's called. I don't know why they call it pink. I don't really I don't really see it as pink, but that's fine. And then I think we'll do like a sort of so I normally do like a sort of cream inside. So it's like cream and purple are their sort of like fabric colours. And then just metallics for their armor, obviously. But yeah, that's looking gorgeous already. Absolutely love this color. Love using it. Uh, Felix says, cool, maybe we'll meet then. You mentioned the Discord. Is there a way to join it? So we're still building it at the moment. Um, we're quite, you know, quite uh, keen to make sure it's like the safe, safe space that we want it to be. Do you know what I mean? So like we don't want to just sort of half-ass it and shove it out and make it more safe over time. We want it to be... Uh, as useful and as safe for everyone joining it as it should be when it starts. Uh, so we're, we're still just sort of like ironing out some kinks. Um, you know, we're going to be messaging people about maybe moderating and stuff like that. So it will be coming soon. Uh, but for anyone who's not aware, the way to join the Discord when it is prepared and ready to roll is by becoming a member of Dicebreaker Plus. So if you look at the, at the sort of like bit where it says the subscribe button and things like that underneath this video on YouTube, you should be able to see a join button and you'll get stuff like emotes. You'll see people like Hatchinoff, for example, have a little badge next to their name. And they get extra videos every month. They get emotes in chat. They get little badges, all kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of perks. One of those perks is uh, the ability to join the Discord. So have a look out for that. We're hoping to do lots of cool things with that Discord. So 
fingers crossed it goes as well as we're planning it to. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine though. You're all very lovely people, so I'm sure you'll be a very good, very good community to have in Discord. There we go. That's the the purple side of that cloak ready to roll. It's like a little bit chipped here. You see, there's like a little raised bit, which I think is just some leftover sprue or something. But that's fine. We'll just leave it on. Ain't hurting nobody. Just make sure it's painted over. We'll let that dry. That's that nice purple now ready to roll. Hatching off, showing off some of the and spun off, see, showing off some of those emotes there. There's me, look. Toto and Rosie and Holly and, and uh, Honey all ready to roll as well. And of course, all the Dice Wrecker team. Dave Tron says, I'd love to be a member, but might be jobless soon, so I can't afford it. First of all, that's horrible. Sorry to hear that. But second of all, like, don't worry about it. You don't, you don't need to be a member of the of the Dice Breaker Plus thing to to support the channel. Like, every time you turn up to a stream or comment on a video, share the link around, anything like that, you're helping us grow, which keeps us in a job. Like, it, we are very very appreciative of you, even if you're not joining up. But obviously, if you join up, you get cool stuff. In fact, I'll show you. I don't know where this is going to come up, but one second, let me just try and find it. I need to stop looking away from the microphone when I'm talking. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, is that the one? Yeah, look. So we've got our little, our little thermometer here, with uh, all of the things that you can unlock emotes wise. So we've got the base ones, which were the team. We've already unlocked all the cats. We've got uh, oh this oh this is actually not up to date. One second, let me get the new one. Let me get the new one. I think that's the newest one we've got. Yeah, there we go. So we've all we've gone all the way up to the rip tombstone. Uh, next up, I believe, is the sixty nine nice emoji. <laughs> then we've got the dice breaker badge and the dice breaker badge in pride colors at one two five. We've got a little paintbrush emoji, which we really need to get for these streams really at one fifty. Um, we've got a big fat F. Uh, we've got an art one for when me and Lily's do our drawing streams. We've got a little dice breaker love heart, a little drink your paint war, which obviously matches our... Oh, crap. I just, oh, I just ruined this paintbrush by shoving it into something like that. Matches our little mugs, which I can only tilt so far because I get water in it. Um, and we've got infinite sand, and we've got the bum emoji right at the top. Excuse my language. So loads and loads of stuff to grab for yourselves. So many cat emojis, says Alex. Well, we've all, we've all got cats. That's a problem. <laughs> apart from uh, apart from Liv and, and me, we've all got cats or multiple cats. So plenty to go around. Right. So the purple's done. I think this is starting to dry now. Yeah. So let's let's start working on some more metallics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like a silver. Uh, which should be in here, I believe. Oh, they've all fallen over. Fantastic. Oh, God. Oh, no, it's such a mess. My beautiful thing. Okay, hold on. Hold on. It's all right. We can save this. We can save this. Don't worry. I have gone fully off the deep end when it comes to Vallejo paints. I'm, I'm fully a Vallejo man now. They are absolutely fantastic, and I love the dropper bottles. Whoa. Here we go. All right, so metallics at the front, and then these... These blues should be here. They're a little bit messed up, but that's fine. I'm trying to have them all in color order. Bloody red, gory red. I think gory red goes up. Yeah, I think it's like that. There we go. That should be the setup. That's how they should have been. Let's pop these back in now. It's a problem. I've been moving this around, which means that it gets, uh, gets all knocked over. But you've got to have nicely organized paints. I mean... It's just so satisfying. Oh, yeah, there we go. And look, they're all in rainbow as well. All in rainbow formation, so. It's very queer, too. But let's have a look at this. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's how you organise your paints, folks. That is how you organise your paints. So we're actually going to get a, uh, a nice silver out from here. Just right at the front, handily. Give that a nice shake. How are the cats getting on with Zoe? Oh, they love Zoe. They, they knew Zoe quite a lot anyway, because Zoe would come around and see them. 
There we go. Oh, Alex says maybe I should needle felt a cat. That's a fantastic idea. If you could needle felt my, my cat Toto using the Toto emote, I would be incredibly happy. <laughs> right. Let's get some silver out. So I'm actually, I've got some, uh, some paintbrush soap as well, which I've been cleaning up my brushes with. Just keeps them nice and unspoiled. There we go. Oh, hold on. Does the music stop for you folks? It has, hasn't it? Never really. There we go. I think it probably switched over to my headphones now. There we go. Right, you should have lo fi hip hop in the background now. Tell me if you don't. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is, using the very fine point of this brush, we're going to get the sort of scale mail underneath here. David John says that Stormcast playing manager of a Games Workshop store in Brighton did an entire Stormcast. I know, I've seen it. I live in Brighton. I've seen it right at the front. It looks amazing. Yeah, an entire, uh, entire army full of pride colours. Full rainbow. Looks incredible. They've got like a display outside the front, which is uh, all in rainbow colours. There we go. So you can just make it out and just painting like a nice little silver. A little skirt bit there. There we go. I can I can turn down the music as much as we want. Actually, I said I live in Brighton. I live in Hove now, because we've moved. But it's not really that far, so... <laughs> it's actually a bite right away. Okay, I'm being very careful. The only problem with this brass colour is I don't actually have it in paint colour. Like, I can't really go over my mistakes very easily, so I need to be very careful when I'm going around it. I might have something similar, but I'll have to look. Or I can mix something up maybe by mixing some some copper and some silver. That's a little bit heavy. There we go. There we go. There's a tiny little bit here just underneath this. These little sort of, I don't even know what these are. Like these just little adornments to our armor. I might do those in gold. Let's see. I'll definitely do like the belt buckle, for example, would be in gold. But yeah, there's the, uh, oh, that's probably focusing now as well. So there's the silver skirt. So now she's got a little bit more underneath her pauldron as well. So we're going to do that next. The nice thing about Stormcast models is they're quite easy to paint because there's a lot of armor, which if you're just doing metallic stuff, then since you just one coat and some some wash and if you base spray them in the main color of armor that you want then a lot of it's sort of pre-painted for you which is fantastic oh thank you for the super chat scott perkins who says may have accidentally bought both the new infinity box and the blood bowl starter set so i'll hopefully be joining in the painting soon excellent uh here's a really interesting thing i've just seen they literally just announced it today i think infinity is starting to make plastic miniatures so for anyone who doesn't know what infinity is it's uh it's a sort of like, what should we call it? Um, what is my brain doing? Uh, sorry, it's, it's sort of like a skirmish tactics game set in like a, a futuristic version of our world. Um, and it's a fantastic game uh, made by a Spanish studio called Corvus Belli. But they mainly do, and whilst they're fantastic miniatures, they're all in metal. And some people love miniatures in metal. I hate miniatures in metal i really hate building them and i really don't like painting them that much either so the news that they are now doing plastic minis or at least they're sort of like prototyping them is fantastic news for me 
Absolutely fantastic news. Right, we're going to do Silver Blade on this weapon as well. Okay. Oh, Vallejo paints just... They just spray so nicely. You barely have to water them. They're, they're so sort of smooth. We're not sponsored by them, but I mean, if they want to sponsor us, then hit me up, Vallejo. There we go. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, just a nice silver blade on that weapon. I'm going to do the other sides as well. I, Ren, I am. I'm painting a Stormcast model, I know. But I actually, like, whilst I think they're dorks, uh, and I'm not a big fan of all of their models, um, I do love some of their showpiece models, especially in Drasto with the big wings. I do love sort of, like, Battle Angels as a vibe. So, kind of suck it in for this one. But that's fine. We're just going to make them not look like what Stormcast is supposed to look like, which is gold and blue, which is a horrible colour scheme, IMO. Um, so we're going to go for a nice, warm, brassy silver. And some purple. Which I think is a much nicer colour scheme. There you go, nice amount of silver on here. I might have to do a second coat on that because the under undercoat's just sort of showing for a little bit. I guess we'll probably have to... I did wash it, but I guess we'll have to do the blade of the sword as well, actually, thinking about it. So let's get this. Some of that wash will show underneath because it's a thin coat, you know, so... Depends how, how much we paint over it, but we'll see some of that. So, you know, it's not completely wasted effort. <laughs> okay, nice thick blob here because it's quite dark. It's going to be difficult to see this part because it's right under her wing. So you're not going to quite see what I'm painting, but I'm painting the underside of this sword. Scott says the metals are great, but unless they're a single piece, they're a nightmare to put together. Yeah, they're really, really, really difficult. Um, the thing is, so for anyone who's not really into miniature stuff, um, when you build plastic models, you use something called plastic cement. Just like this. Um, I've got some rebel ones, but you can get loads. It's liquid glue for plastics. Uh, and basically what it does is, instead of it just being... Because normally like a glue is like a is a, an adhesive, right? So... If you've got like a, an object here and an object here and you put glue in the middle, the glue dries in the center and bonds with both surfaces and then holds it together, right? With plastic cement, it doesn't, like, it's not an extra layer of adhesive that you're adding. It actually melts the plastic and, and forms the two pieces of plastic together as if they were the same piece. Um, so they tend to have like a really, really easy... Uh, construction to them, the plastic miniatures, because they're really, really easy to put together, and then they hold really well as well. And obviously, they can they can break apart if you you know if you manhandle them a bit too much, but they're usually a lot more uh, sturdy, you know, when you, you drop them or anything like that. Uh, but with metal stuff, literally, I was filming some B roll when I recommended Infinity for our miniatures list. Um, and I dropped my army, and the entire thing shattered into all of the original pieces. And I was like, wow, okay. And I was not in the mood to rebuild them. So I was like, well, guess I'm never using that army again. <laughs> Which really sucks. Um, but I also just like, just in the first place, they're really tricky to build as well. I find, because you have to use superglue, and I, I really don't enjoy building a superglue. I find it really tricky. Which is a pain, but, you know, what are you going to do? But now they're using heat-injected plastic or something? Which I saw some people have some reservations about. I, I don't really know what it's like. I'll have to see. But we'll see how they come out. Because, you know, if they found a way to do it well, then they found a way to do it well. Because they've got really good miniatures, so I don't think they would... You know, I don't think they would put out stuff that's really cheap and crappy. I remember the whole sort of fine cast debacle with... Uh, with Games Workshop, because those came out awful, and they just had all this leftover stock that they just couldn't push. 
Because as soon as they saw the fine car stuff, they were like, nope, I don't want that. Because I know it's going to be bendy and horrible and crap. So if they've got the same problem on their hands, I doubt they'd want to go for that. Scott Perkins says that Mini would make a great Azamar Paladin for D&D. Yeah, absolutely. Assuming plastic minis are easier to repair breakages of as well, given the cement says truth. Yeah, well, yeah, literally, like... The thing is, like, if you keep adding glue on top and on top and on top, unless you're stripping the glue off every time you're resealing it, you're just building up a thicker and thicker layer of adhesive that snaps really easily. But with plastic, obviously, you know, you get a similar thing because you keep melting the plastic, but eventually, like... Um, the plastic dries over, so you're just melting it again. You're not really adding anything on top. So I, I find it a little bit easier to uh, to repair them as well. So that's why if I drop a plastic mini and the arm falls off, I'm like, yeah, that's fine, don't worry about it. If I drop a metal one, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little bolts in silver. Just on the sort of connection point to the armor. And then this sort of twin tail comet motif here I'm going to do in gold, I think. As well as these little tails as well. Maybe these. Actually, let's get that. Let's get that back piece a little silvered up as well. Yeah, they are really pleasant to paint, the, the Stormcast. A lot of people, because I, I moaned on Twitter recently about the fact that every star set has the bloody Stormcast Eternals in because they're the poster boys. Um, but a lot of people are like they are super easy to paint though, which is a fair comment. So for, for beginners, they're great. There we go. That's better. And we'll get, you know, some of that details a little bit hard to make out now on that little that little seal, but it will pick back up when we give, give it a wash. Dave Tron, I did see the, the dragon models. Um, I'm more interested in the the new orc models. Because there's uh, there's two characters on monsters and they look fantastic. But this is like the sort of... I think it's like the Realm of Beasts or something, right? So they're doing a lot of like big monster models. Um, so if anyone didn't, didn't catch any of our other ones, I've been painting these... Uh, these guys who are on the other side of the of the battle from the, the Stormcast, like these or orcs. They're called like the Cruel Boys, and they, they look fantastic. I really, really love the new orcs. I think they all look great. I'm not a big fan of it. They look like they're in sort of like, um, you know, like American football armor, the, the standard Age of Sigma Oryx. I'm not a really big fan of them. Whereas the new ones look way more sort of like Lord of the Rings y, which I'm a big fan of. Okay. So we've got some nice silver. I need to do the back of this base plate as well. Or this back plate, rather. Just do that. Okay. That's looking nice. Again, not much of these details that you can pick out just yet, but that's fine. You'll see them. Don't worry. Up next, let's do some gold, shall we? So. What I'm going to do is, I quite like the deep, sort of, more orangey golds. It's called Glorious Gold. And I'll show you a cool trip, a cool, a cool trick, rather, for making those golds look really, really lush. Oh, actually, I said I was going to show you an example model. I've got some here. Hold on. So these aren't properly finished, but let me show you. So this is the colour scheme that I use for Stormcut. Oh, they're very dusty. Hold on. They've been sat around for a while. This is the color scheme that I use for Stormcast. So I've got these really, really rich golds. Uh, and then cream and purple. With like some, some little accents of blue for the handles and stuff. Um, I think they look lovely, especially the silver armor. Because I think when they're, ooh, when the entire armor set is gold, I think they look really gaudy. But if you just have little gold motifs, you know, like little bits of gold, I think it looks way, way nicer. But obviously that's my opinion, like everyone else has their own favourite colour scheme for things. Here we go. So let's get some polished gold. Oh, got a Slack message. I'll have to mute that. 
Liv, why is Liv messaging me? God damn it, Liv. <laughs> He's had words about her. She's supposed to be on holiday. She keeps messaging me work things. All right, Liv, go on holiday. Go be on holiday. Right. Look at that gold. Beautiful color. So, for this, we're going to do these little tails down here. Yeah, there we go. They're really picking up. And now it's a little bit yellowy, but bear with me. Because I'm going to orange it up a little bit once we get the wash stage. But let's just get all these gold little highlights going. That's the ticket. These are going to really pop as well against the, the silver and brass. That was that was on Slack, Han Solo. She messaged me on Slack on a holiday. It's outrageous. But bless her, she's been very helpful because we have uh, an incredibly cool video coming out this week. Hopefully this week anyway. No, 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 it should be this week. It should be coming out on Saturday. Um, so we went to a local Brighton escape room because we've started a new series, which you'll uh, you'll be able to see on Saturday, which is called Dice Breakout, where we try and beat the the record holders uh, escape rooms in England, um, and possibly beyond. So we did a local one called Bewilder Box, which is literally just across from the office, um, and we had a fantastic time. And it's come out as a really fun video, and I think people are really going to like it. So look out for that. But it was something that lifts it up. So she's just helping me out with some of the assets, because I'm editing it. I was on camera for that one. Hermit Prime, I think... So what you want to do, Hermit Prime, if you're just getting started, and the, this is what we were just talking about, these Stormcast models. So... This is like technically a small model, but like look at it in comparison to my hand. It's way chunkier, right? So you've got like a lot of flat panels, which when you're first starting out, like this, these bits of cloth, like these robes here, these big shoulder pads, super chunky models, like not necessarily like a big showpiece like this, because I think that will be quite a lot to take on. It's going to be quite complicated and you want to sort of say, like build up to those. But these super chunky models, it doesn't have to be Stormcast, but these are good examples of it. Super chunky models are really, really easy to start painting. I mean, even these, uh, you know, these new orcs have got, you know, lots of like exposed skin, lots of leather and stuff, which, you know, look, look at these sort of like leather robes and things, which should be nice and easy to paint. So that, that would be my recommendation. Find sort of big chunky models that have got lots of, uh, lots of flat panels to paint. EA says, uh, lowlies in escape rooms when the irresistible force meets the immovable object. We're going to have a lot of fun clips in that bit. By the way, I don't know if anyone's seen, but you can now clip on YouTube, just like you do on Twitch. So if something really tickles you, please do make a clip for us. There we go. So I'm just going around this rivet here in the gold. It's picking up really nicely. Once we get to the wash stage, that gold's going to look even nicer. You just wait. Get these little tails here. So, a little bit of Warhammer lore. The Mark of Sigmar, who these guys worship. It's the twin-tailed comet, which is also like the sort of logo for the old Warhammer. Um, old Hammer, as it's called now, but the, uh, the old fantasy battles. It's the twin-tailed comet, because it usually arrives when a time of great change is about to happen, so flew over the sky at the start of the apocalypse and stuff. There we go. So again, those nice gold details are starting to pop out now. It's a little bit desaturated on this camera, so they do actually look a little bit brighter in life than they do on this camera. Just in case anyone's wondering. Yeah, there we go. 
I think this is going to look really nice when it's finished. What time are we on? Oh my god, it's quarter two already. Need to do less blabbing, more painting. I want to get this to a nice state so that we can show it off properly, you know? There we go. It's a nice gold there. Any other bits that need some gold? The back of that little shoulder detail there needs some. We can do gems as well. You can see on the... Uh, can see on the like uh, preview image over there. She's got like these sort of blue gems in the official color scheme, so we can do something similar to that as well. We'll get this belt buckling gold too. Yeah, nice. We'll go over that with some some leather in a minute. Speaking of leather. I think we should do a little bit of brown. So let's get a charred brown, nice dark one for the straps. David Tron the Buster says the twin tail comet symbolism is for the connection between Dracothian God saving Sigma and working together. Well, so it used to be as well. It, I think it sort of heralded. It's kind of like, you know, like the star in the sky and like the sort of nativity myth. It's that kind of thing. It heralded it, herald, heralded um, like Sigmar's birth and, and stuff like that as well in the old law. I know way more about the old law than I do the new law. There we go. Uh, my knowledge of the old law mainly consists of the Stormcast Eternals and dorks. <laughs> and everyone else is way cooler. Not really into chaos either, they're just a bit like, I'm the big bad evil man, you know? Yeah, it heralded, heralded, it, heralded, herald, herald, it was the herald of the end times as well, as Iron says. Basically, like, it's a, when, when people see the twin tail comet in the sky, in, in the old lore anyway, like, something big is about to happen, something really, really substantial. Um... So before, like, great events, it would usually fly through the sky. In fact, in Warhammer 2, it uh, also appears at the start. They are dorks. They're nerds. I'm sorry, if you play Stormcast Tunnel, my bad, but they're bad. Heralded. Heralded. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling so much to say that. Heralded. Right. You get some nice beastie brown. Let's do some straps. So we'll start with our belt. These little details are great because they just break up the other colours a bit. Gives you some nice borders between bits that are actually the same colour. Makes them sort of stand out a bit more from each other. Oof, she did pretty well there. Didn't go over anything, which is good. This bit's a bit tricky, because I've got to go right in between two bits that I can't mess up. Quite dark colour. There we go. It's got a nice, nice belt. I should be picking up on. Oh, so we've got some straps we've got on her arm here, and like a gauntlet. Put a little bit too much on the brush. There you go. Let's grab those bits. She's got like a little bit of cloth showing there as well, actually, which I might do in the cream colour. Any other bits of brown? I would assume there's some... Um... Yeah, she's got some on the back of her collar here. Just little bits, just to... Add some fine details, which is always nice. There we go. 
Okay. And then I might do... I quite like doing sort of a deep blue hilt for the for the weapons. I think it just contrasts with the purple quite nicely. Alex, are you actually doing Toto? That is incredible. Thank you so much. Please do show me on Twitter when you're done. I'm at Cube Whelan. K-U-B-E Whelan. If someone could link that, that'd be lovely. Because, yeah, I would, I would absolutely love to see that. A nice little felt blended Toto would be very, very adorable. Okay. Let's see. What else have we got? I think we want to get... Might do a little bit more gold, actually. So let's get some... Let's get this knee plate in gold as well. Let's get some details out. There's a lot of brass. So we just want to break it up a little bit. A lot of problem as well is... Um, because the rest of the model that's base sprayed is also in brass, like it's it's making it seem a lot more prevalent than it actually is. Should we do the shoulder plate? Oh, why not? Let's do the shoulder plate in gold as well. She is like a sort of main character, so she deserves to stand out a bit, I reckon. There we go. Just need to get around the corner now. They've got these very, very dramatic pauldrons with uh, almost like lion faces on. Might be Sigma actually. Not hundred percent. Let's get that in gold as well. There we go. So dramatic, so extra. Just gonna do these corners here. This paint's starting to dry out a little bit, so it's a little bit more hard to get it smoothly pushing across. I need to get a wet palette set up for here. You can just get sort of pre-made ones that I might might just treat myself to. Rather than using takeaway loads and stuff, because if I get a nice thin one, I can just slot it into my into my little paint box. Alex says, "I know my limits. If I tried to fill a whole animal today, I would end up with some weird legs." <laughs> my friend is an artist, Laurie Pink, and I have the same issue she does when I work at Speed. It's gonna be a button badge of the emoji. Oh, okay, sweet. That's absolutely fine. That'd be lovely. Right. So next up, let's start painting these wings. Because we want some detail to, to stand out on the armor. If the armor's all brassy and you can't even see it, that's not very exciting, is it? And obviously when it's finished, everything will look great. But you know, we want to we wanna start seeing it look cool now. So wash this off. This little brush soap, by the way, is called, um, where's the lid? It's called the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. It's really good. Just stops your brushes from dying if you just wash them properly every now and again. Mark Cohen says, Army Painter have a nice wet palette you can store your brushes in also. Ooh. Yeah, I might look into that. Thank you for the recommendation, Mark. Right. Okay, before we, yeah, before we do the wings i'm going to quickly show you the the gold wash because it looks gorgeous so i want to see it so we're going to grab our wash brush oh no wrong one there we go a nice big chunky one and we are going to grab sit there i'll still do my favorite washes you can have a sort of mix of different paints but this is Reichlin Fleche Gloss. So this is a sort of like warm orangey brown wash, but it's it's gloss, which means it dries shiny. 
so you don't lose the sort of metallic sheen of the armor, um, but it gives it more of a of a sort of warm orangey gold, which looks absolutely lovely. This is my favorite trick for uh, for golds. Normally I do sort of Gehenna's gold as well for the for the base. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, look at that. The amount of color that it just brings into it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Like look at the, the difference in the warmth between the unwashed and the and the washed. I don't know if it's quite showing up on washing the camera, but yeah, I think it's beautiful. Let's get it on the shoulder plate here. go yeah it's a super specific wash but it's one that is probably one of my favorite purchases there you go shoulder plate showing up now as well get it up on these little tails here do it on the other side there you go Nice. Just grabbing any pooling bits. Got it on the, on the little knee area here. There we go. And then last but not least, we're just going to shove it on this seal that she's got coming off of her shoulder. There we go. Now that's a nice gold. That is a nice gold. So that's just going to dry really nicely. All right, Alex. How you doing, mate? It's weirding me out that you've called Alex Truman when you should be Alan. Yeah, she's got a nice purple cape, which I think is pretty cool. I need to do the inside of her still, but... Um, I'm also going to grab my earth shade again, and we're going to do the silvers. Actually, no, let's get some normal oil. We'll get a black wash for the silvers. Gives them a nice tone. Toridor says, hi, what clip I might try to make is Wheels describing Homestar Runner for context of a strong bad reference to live. I related hard to that struggle to encapsulate it for the unaware. Alan, I tried to explain what Homestar is to, to Liv, who's the new star, and she just had no idea what was going on. It made me feel very old, even though we're the same age. <laughs> there we go. Nice normal oil wash on the silver. Nice. Again, we'll just make it heavier on the bottom so it's got more of a shadow. We'll do the same for the blade on the top. Oh. You should change your YouTube name. Everyone is called Alex now, says Alex. <laughs> okay. Change your name to just Alan. <laughs> there we go. Do the other side as well. And then we need to get the scale mail in bits. I need to get a new null null because this one's absolutely dried out. Most of it just from spilling it all over the table, of course, which <laughs> is just a, a null null classic. Add a lot of detail to the scale mail so it just sort of dries into the dips. Beautiful. Whenever I say my own painting is really, really beautiful and stuff like that, I feel like you know, like Gordon Ramsay on a cooking show, like, now look at that. Beautiful. Just fantastic. What a, oh, what a beautiful wash. Really terrific. There we go. That's going to sit nicely. And then I might add a bit of this to some of the brass as well, just to blend it out a little bit. OK. 
Okay. Very nice. Okay, so whilst we're waiting for those to dry, that's a little bit heavy there. Okay. What we're gonna do is paint the wings. So <laughs> call me Big Al, please. <laughs> Great British paint off show when, says Brian. I mean, look, I'd watch it. I think, to be honest, Games Workshop are missing a trick. They should do like, because they've got their Golden Demon thing. They should do like a Great British Bake Off style painting challenge show. Timed painting and stuff like that. I think it'd be fantastic. Just pay us to do it for you. We'll do it. <laughs> okay. Close that wash, and now we need, which means I need to sort these out as well now because my my earth tones drawer is also a complete mess. All right, so these should be at the back. Oh god, yeah, this has turned into an absolute mess. I don't know where anything's supposed to be anymore. Oh god, it's fine. <laughs> We'll just move everything back. Okay, uh, so we need a bone white, probably. Off white, let's do off white. It's a little bit more bright than your bone white. Oh God, yeah, I need to sort that tray out at some point. It's a real mess. Kobe Morris says, I watched Paul Hollywood paint a dragon, to be fair. I mean, we, you don't necessarily have to have Paul Hollywood host it. I imagine you'd get some, like, you know, you'd get Duncan Rhodes to host it or something. Although they'd have to hire him back for that, wouldn't they? Okay. So we get some off-white. And I'm going to use my big brush. I'm going to start painting these wings. Being careful not to go over anything we've already done. Probably should have done this towards the start, to be honest, but that's fine. This is a little bit thin, so I just need to be careful with it. Bubbling a little bit. Yeah, it's just crevicing. Let's dry some of the liquid off of it. Acting a bit like a wash, which is not really what we want. Get some more paint on there. That's better. White is a notoriously difficult colour to paint with. Everything comes straight through it, which isn't great. As we start to pick up some of that wing, I think it's actually going to start making the model really come to life. There we go. Yeah, the problem with these big brushes is they can store a lot of water in them, so... <laughs> if you accidentally overload it a little bit, it's going to be difficult to dry it out fully. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze. I'm not too bad with yellow, Alan. I don't mind yellow. Obviously, I do a lot of yellow. But, uh. They can be tricky. Anything bright, basically. Anything really, really quite white heavy. Let's get some more paint. Too much, I think. I need to start trusting the mix, you know, because these Vallejo paints are already pretty pretty well thinned out. I don't need a whole lot more water added to them. Yeah, that's better. Oh, 
My main problems with uh, like whites and yellows is um, washing, because every wash on white and yellow just makes it look dirty. It's a real pain in the ass. It's quite satisfying doing these huge bits on models. I painted a uh, Lord of Change for one of my first big ones. And it was great just having like these massive wings. Just paint loads of a single color over. So you can get it done at record speeds. Especially with these huge brushes. If you're ever doing big winged miniatures, I recommend you get one of these big fat base brushes. This is an XL, this one. It's massive. Dip it in Tipex, perfect, this true. <laughs> there we go. Paint your taint. What on earth is that, Angel Beat? Actually, do I want to know? I'm not sure I want to know. There we go. Let's get a little bit more going. There we go. It's brightening up a little bit now as it's thickening. You need quite a few coats with a white, I think, to get the colours to really shine through because it's so translucent that it will just, it will just take the colour of whatever the hell's underneath it. Obviously, if you base it white, then you're all good, but this is based with a metallic colour, so. Okay. Right, the back to the wings is easy. The tricky part is going to be getting the front, because they dip into the armour. So... Trying not to spill the white onto anything else is going to be a bit tricky. Well, there you go, some nice bright wings on the back. And already that's making her look much more like a complete model, you know. Where's Jane? Struth. Honestly, I would have assumed it would be Luke or something. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Dislodge the camera a little bit there. Problem is, half of this is like hanging off. So I need to be careful when I lean on it because it's on the edge of the table. Can I get this a bit more on camera? There we go. So I'm just very carefully just sort of creeping my way down the brushes. Walking fast, this is past and I'm homebound. Again, we're just basing, so you know we can be able to be a little bit, a little bit more vigorous with the paint. As you can see, as we get to these little bits here, this is where we're starting to touch the armor. So I need to be really careful not to mess it up because, as I said, I don't actually own Root Lord Brass as a paint. I've only got it as a base spray, and it's in the office, so I can't really uh, fix any mess I make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off this big brush. Lot so pretty. Washing it. It's getting quite soapy this water now. There we go. Just actually properly cleans the brushes, which when you just do water, never works quite as well. Make Jane face up to episode. I don't want anything to do with it. Jane, Jane can do whatever the hell she wants. Okay. There we 
go. And then we're going to get a smaller brush to start getting into the crevices. I might go quickly change my water. Just give me two seconds. Oh god, a little bit tight down here. Ah, because I've got quite a lot of soap in there now, so I just want to wash that off. easy now the kitchen's literally just right next to me so <laughs> there we go oh alan honestly this brush brush soap is fantastic it's so good i recommend everyone everyone get on it it's not that expensive as well you can grab it on amazon for pretty cheap but the trick with it is you've got to do it off like pretty much straight after you finish with the brush because you know Otherwise, it all just dries into the bristles, which is not very nice. Right. Fresh water. Dry that off. Let's do some more white. So, I need to get into these little areas down here now. Again, there's some bits where falling into the crevices a little bit but that's fine that's fine there we go it's better just want to be as careful as possible around here so we don't ruin any of the work we've already done So that's that right hand side mainly done. There's a few bits which are super close, which I'm gonna have to get real careful with. Excuse me while I go quiet because I am very much concentrating. You're gonna paint a dresser. I might do the wings first. <laughs> Turns out you can make quite a mess otherwise. <laughs> at some point you do need to ask yourself is anyone going to see this because if they're not you don't have to paint it it's a little tip for you oh god yeah probably mess one bit up try and wash it off there we go if you can get some water on it sometimes you can save face a little bit All right, that right hand side is done. Now we need to do the left. Almost there, almost there. How is everyone doing on their side? How many of you are hobby painting right now or uh, doing anything creative really? It's a creative zone. Here we go. Oh, by the way, for anyone who watched our uh, stream we did with Steamforged where we modelled that watcher dog I was talking about my mate who does 3D modelling which is Alan by the way so if you were wondering there he is I mentioned you in another stream Alan but you weren't watching so you'll never know what I said you'll never know Right. 
And that's the ticket. Okay, so we've gotten up to the safe zone. <laughs> now we need to do the dangerous bit. I'm just going to clean up some of these edges over here. I guess Andrasta is just winging it, it's so going to be Angel B. Goodness sake. There we go. Sorry, my headphones are hitting against the microphone, so you might hear some <laughs> weird noises. All right. I'm going to get into this little crevice here now. So we haven't actually painted the staff yet, so we can be a little bit more liberal around this bit. It's handy, because that's going to be a completely different color. So don't need to be too worried about that. But it's the bit where it gets right up next to the armor, which I'm worried about. Okay. Fanny Olivia is at work trying to update equipment uh, that I should not be working on, but what do I but do what I'm told? And Huliex Angel says I'm working on some digital art and having quite a lovely time. What are you uh, what are you painting? Or modeling or whatever it is you're doing. Just getting those little bits. So unfortunately, these do show up quite a bit, these bits. I do need to paint them. Just a little bit worried about doing it. There we go. Yeah, this bit's a little bit easier, thankfully. Okay, right. Not too much spillage, which is good. We have some wings. Everyone, we have some wings. I'm not talking chicken wings. Let's get some nice slabs on this bit now as well. Let's brighten this up a little bit. So now, what I want to do is So this is off white. So this is quite a bright white. It's not, you know, it's not fully, you know, like snow white. Not the character. Um, but it's like pretty bold white. So what I want to do now is I want to get progressively darker whites and move into a sort of browny color as I get towards the, the origin of the wing. So you'll see it's sort of like segmented into these little layers. Yeah, there you go, that picks it up quite well. So you've got like the, the outer feathers, then like another another bit here, and another bit here, and here, and here. So as it goes up, it's going to get a little bit more brown as we go. What about buffalo cauliflower wings, is true. I mean, maybe. Thank you, Hansolo. I love I love wings. I think I think wings look incredible on models. So the, the new Oryx, they have a... Um, new character who's riding on this massive vulture creature and it looks incredible i can't wait to paint it i will be getting one i'm hoping games workshop will be nice enough to send me one but if not i'm probably just gonna buy it because <laughs> it looks so good oh hello tom hawkins we've got all the friends showing up where will Watford finish this year i think we're staying safe mate I think we're staying safe. We haven't really bought any new talent or anything like that, but I think we'll be fine. <laughs> we got Sar, mate. We'll be all right. I think we'll we'll do what we normally do in the Premier League, which is we'll be absolutely incredible for the first half of the season. And as, as soon as people start thinking about Christmas, we'll start slowly dropping in quality, but then end up absolutely fine at the end. I think that's the vibe we're going to go for this year. Right. So now we've used off-white, we're going to get a nice darker white going. So let's try bone white instead. And what I've got as well, when we get to the dry brushing phase, I've got like a pure white. Ugh. Dead white, there you go. I've got dead white, which I'm going to use, which is going to be our sort of, our um, dry brushing material, because it's going to be a lot brighter than everything else. Tom Dini. <laughs> I think Deanie's on the out, to be honest, mate. 
He's getting past his, uh, past his usefulness a little bit. But, you know, still the club captain, still serving a role. So as you can see, we've got our half white there, and our bone white is just a little bit darker. So we're going to use this for the next layer. So we'll start on the outside. So we're just going to be doing the next layer up of feathers. So we're going to start here. That's the one. And again, it doesn't matter if we get the, the ones that are a little bit higher. That's fine. I'm just going to get a little bit more brownie grayish as they go up. There we go. That's the ticket. I think we'll double layer here because they get a little bit shorter as they go up. And they just tuck in a little bit here, but I'm going to get them here as well. So you can see, as that starts to finish off, it's making a sort of layered effect. So they're, all, they're getting progressively darker as they go into the wing. I can actually turn up the brightness on this a little bit if you want to get some more light in here. Okay. Yeah, so you see that? Off white here, bone white here, and then we'll get more brownish as we go up. <laughs> Tom Hawkins says, uh, is that an official Games Workshop envelope palette? It is actually, yeah. They sell these uh, sell these at all all uh, you know professional Games Workshop painting supply stores. Um, you know, not you not in your bog standard ones, you understand. You have to be pretty high level to be using one of these. Yeah, he wanted to says, if you could include a tabletop game in the Olympics, what would you pick? Competitive Star Realms could supply lots of drama. I think you'd like there are games, Cube Quest included, which I think would be absolutely at home in a sporting environment. Clask, for example, I think they could have Clask in the Olympics. Um Crocodile, absolutely. Like dexterity games, I think are, are pretty much sports already. A lot of people do sort of like Twilight Imperium tournaments as well, which last like days and days and days. It'd be like cricket style commentary on that, where you've got absolutely nothing to talk about for the majority of the event, which I think would be quite funny. Once again, just this inner layer that we're going to be painting with the with the bone white. Oh god! I need to stop knocking my camera. Daddy Tom, what do you reckon about this uh, this little setup I've got? By the way, I've got this attached to my painting case here. I think it looks pretty good. As a fellow video producer. Apologies to anyone who doesn't realise why we call him Daddy Tom. That's from a past life. Feeling very loved and supported in the stream. All my mates turning up. Okay. Again, we'll just get that inside bit here. The little sort of backpack of the wings. Okay. Which game would cause an international incident? Oh god. Probably like the Game of Thrones board game or something. <laughs> That'd definitely be like the spark that started a fire. Okay, again. Getting the inner layer. So this is again where it's gonna get a little bit more tricky because we've got 
parts of the model that we don't want to paint over. Okay. Your days of making videos are done for now. Oh, but you still haven't told me what you're doing. Actually, you need to DM me about what your new job is. Being very cryptic about it. There we go. Nice. Now this one is actually going to be a little bit more tricky because quite a lot of it is just blocked off by the spear, but we should be fine. It's a bit on the nose to be called and dressed to the Celestial Spear and to have a spear, you know? Turn up with a scythe or something. <laughs> Mess people up. There we go. That's the ticket. Might have to go over some mistakes a little bit. Just in the bits where the off-white has just sort of spilled over the edge. Oh, that's fine. No such thing as mistakes, only happy little accidents, as Father Bob once said. What board game would Jez beat Mark at? Some kind of dexterity-based game, I reckon. Anything that required physical ability. <laughs> Anything that required them shoving one right in their goal hole, you know? Oh yeah, I, I forgot you were painting to now, Tom. How, did, how are the Space Marines going? You need to get back to them. Right. Okay, so now... So we've done the... We've done the... The bone white... Sort of inside. It's becoming just sort of like a feather tutorial now, isn't it? Since you've got so much feather going on. Um, so now that we've done that, I want to get like a nice brownie white. So let's see what we've got. Just sort of the lightest brown that I can find, really. Got a beige. Middle stone. That's a grey. Oh, this is all messed up. Maybe the medium grey? Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. Medium grey, that's the, the one up apparently. You can see from the from the colours here the way they're sort of gradient. So you've got the, the bright white here, the darker, darker. You can darker with each one and then we'll do a, a nice brown. So this one I want to be super careful with now because now we're actually getting to the territory where it's starting to be finished off. So we're going to get like a nice border. All of these smaller feathers here are going to be in this colour. And then about halfway up we'll go to actual brown. And it's going to look very segmented now. But once we wash and dry brush it's going to tie it all together. I really love doing feathers actually. I haven't done them in ages. They're really satisfying because they can come out really nice. And they're the kind of thing where dry brushing just looks fantastic. Let's get a bit of a wash on this. So I have to pick up quite a lot. I've done Lieutenant, uh, two five sets of intercessors, eradicators, and doing interceptors at the moment. Blimey, you've been very busy. You've been on the whole army. You said you were... Uh, Said you were just painting some models. I didn't realize you were setting up a whole 40k army. Let's push this back a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to get these feathers here as well. The ones that are sticking out a little bit. I 
That's the ticket. I imagine these streams are a lot more relaxing when it's not me and Liv <laughs> chatting nonsense at each other, by the way. <laughs> Bit more vibesy. Every now and again, Liv will just say something and I'll be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she really throws me off guard sometimes. Which is why she's so much fun to work with. Get those ones as well. Yeah, that's nice. Here we go. So look, there's our full gradient. Oh no, not not quite full because we need the brown top. But look, if we're going from sort of quite white to a sort of more yellowy white to a browny white, and then we'll get like a darker brown at the top. So we're going to repeat the same on the other edge. I saw someone do like bright rainbow colored wings as well for like a pride model for this, which looked really cool. Again, we're just gonna get all the tiny feathers. All these little sort of rounded edge ones at the top. Okay. Let's get underneath these a little bit as well. Just get these edge feathers right about here. Imagine you see a lot more of the process when it's just one person as well. That's every brush stroke. Which if you want to do something similar yourself, it's also very handy. So you see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. So that's the back wings done. See how they sort of fade off into each other. And again, it's not quite oh, blending just yet because it's still layered. We will be fixing that, don't worry. Just tuck this in. I'm gonna give this a nice little wash. Just gets a little bit segmented at the moment. You can see it's got quite a bit of paint sort of sticking out of it. It's a nice brush washing ASMR. Queen Cool Mercy says, hey, sorry I'm late. I pulled an all-nighter listening to the audiobook of the Song of Achilles, and now I'm just absolutely ruined for the rest of my day. Oh my god. That's fine. Look, sleep is for the week, alright? I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> By the way, I got a really early, like, early night last night, so I had a headache. <laughs> so, I'm also absolutely lying. Um, Hulie X Angel says, uh, have to take a break now and hop off to drive home, but we'll hopefully be back in a bit. Okay, cool. We're going to go for another half hour, so hopefully we'll see you, but I mean, I might go a little bit longer, to be honest, because I'm having a good time. I want to get this model done. Okie doke. So again, need to be very careful around this armor, because I cannot repaint it. So, I like to live life on the edge here at Dicebreaker. Got a little bit of that water still on the brush, which is making it a little bit crevicey, but that's fine. It can be kind of useful for these bits of the paint because obviously they're quite detailed anyway, so you can get a little bit more, a little bit more of the. Uh, the crevices that are hard to reach, it will just sort of fill it for you anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And you can notice by the posture I'm taking right now, why I have such a bad back all the time. Let's get as much as I can from this top angle. And then we'll flip her over. I'm coming from here now instead. One thing, by the way, if you've got a very thin paint, be careful about how liberally you paint because you can sort of flick 
without realizing, especially if you've got like a wash, you kind of flick paint onto other bits of the model that you're not really trying to hit. Um, but you can actually use that technique for splats and sprays and stuff. So if you want like, if you wanted like blood splatters up armor and stuff like that, you can get to the edge of an old brush and just sort of flick red paint and stuff like that, which would create like a nice splatter effect, for example. It's kind of handy. But conversely, it can actually be really annoying because it can <laughs> mess up bits that you didn't actually mean to. Okay. So we've got fully layered wings now. We might do another coat on the inside because they're a little bit, a little bit brighter than they should be. Got all the seagulls in the background at the moment. Apologies. That's what you get for living on the seaside. There we go. Okay, and our last, we are going to get. One of the lighter browns that we have. Maybe a burnt umber? The one that's too dark. Maybe the beastie brown. I've got a beige brown as well that I could sort of... Let's see what the beige brown looks like. I, I want it to be a little bit more striking, but we can also just do thinner layers at this point. Sleep is for those who are critically under caffeinated, says Trist. I don't I don't really drink any caffeine. Like the only caffeine I get is from I don't know, like Coke or whatever. You know, cans of Coke. <laughs> um a little hair in here. A little bit. Yeah, that's that's not too dark, this brand, so let's use this. So I'm going to get, actually, if we've got quite a few browns to pick from, then let's, what I'm going to do is just gradually build it up again. So we'll do the, the wing here, brown. This is where I just want to get there, the layers. Actually, it's still kind of drying on that side. Let's do this side instead. Just sort of building it up from the top down. There we go. So as it gets higher up the wing, it's a little bit quicker to swap between each color. So you can see now we've got like a sort of dark brown top. Could not survive without my Diet Coke. I drink like two liters a day, not even a joke. That is horrendous, Queen. It's like the worst flavor of Coke as well. I'm gonna let this bottom feather stay the old color. I can just get the other two. So it looks like it's a little bit more layered, which I think is nice. Okay, and then it's getting into fine detail territory now. In fact, I might swap brushes. This one's quite big. Yeah, sorry, Diet Coke is horrible. <laughs> Evolving Introvert says, thank you for this. I've had a rough morning and needed something to just zen out with. Oh, I'm glad I'm, glad I'm helping out. Vanilla flavored Coke is the worst. Are you mad, Aiden? Vanilla Coke is the absolute best one. Iron Brew is just sugar. <laughs> Iron Brew doesn't have a flavor. It's just sugar flavor. <laughs> As a type 1 diabetic, I must drink my diet beverages religiously so I can pretend to have it under control. Yeah, that's fair enough. I do prefer Pepsi Max to Coke, I think. I don't really drink full fat anything. So it's either Max or Zero.
it's when you look on the back of one of those and you get like the sort of dietary information and it's like zero percent everything and it's like cool what is this made of <laughs> oh hello no switch yeah cherry pepsi that's the one how you doing my love okay a little bit more of this into the feathers that's better a little bit more control with this brush just because it's a little bit smaller so I'm not lathering it on quite as much oh, love the mini trumpets in this one they're still coming through right yeah that's cool I just want to sort of sporadically pick out little feathers that go lower than the line, which will improve the blending, I think, a little bit. Oh, crap. I just hit my head against the bloody mic. This will bit will be a little bit slower, by the way. Just as I'm painting these fine details. Oh, this is where the wrist gets a little bit sore. Queen of Mercy says... Uh, I love me that delicious cocktail of completely unnatural taste that is Diet Coke. <laughs> I like that it has hardly any sweetness to it too compared to all those others. Uh, nice to it says, I'm good, thanks. How are you? How's painting? It's going well. We're, oh, I keep smacking my head against the microphone, but apart from that, it's going well. Um, we're painting Indrasta, the Celestial Spear, which is about as dramatic as, as names go. Um, but she is a very, very cool model. She's got like a sort of Valkyrie vibe to her, which I'm very much enjoying. Just like this. So we're currently painting our wings. So I've got like this sort of, this is the one that's the most detailed, but we've got like a sort of gradient effect going on, which we're just starting to finish up now. So I've done the majority of it, but we're just doing in the, the darker sort of feather details now. So again, we're just gonna repeat on the other side, the same sort of level. Careful not to go anything we've already painted. There we go. That's better. I promise I'm trying my best not to smack my headphones against the microphone. going to get the top two feathers and not the bottom one just to blend it a little bit more oh, James says uh, the slide at your local playground was the inspiration for Diet Coke's flavour <laughs> but I respect anyone who likes it because it's definitely the, the lesser evil good lord uh, Queen says, Mary says, I mean, if I had to drink anything exclusively forever, it'd be porn star martinis. I don't even care if it's 10 a.m. on a Tuesday in March. Give me that sweet passion fruit alcohol fruit burn. Hell yes. Hell yes, Queen. Queen is the right name for you. I, th I think, uh, the best way to describe the kind of cocktails I like to drink is fruit juice. <laughs> Alcoholic fruit juice. There's a, um... A rose wine as well that's called like pink moscato or something and literally just tastes like juice i'm like give me the juice give me all that juice i want to not even realize i'm getting drunk give me that sugar it's a drink like a small baby there we go okay that's the back done, that. Nice and blended. I'll do, again, I'll do like a couple of little feathers that are a little bit below the line, but we'll just make it blend a little bit nicer. Good. A little bit, this, little bit of this is like a tiny bit messy, but it's kind of fine because we're going to be washing and brushing, so it's all good. OK. 
Okay. Here we go. So, going over the edge now. So, again, we're on the inside, which makes it a little bit... A little bit cautious. Making sure not to get anything we've already done the wrong colour. Including the sword, which I accidentally just put a blob of brown on. <laughs> which is fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And again, if there's little bits that are hidden, and no one's going to see it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, chat. Not every model has to be perfect. Jam, jam. <laughs> Not enough songs have jam, jam in them. Sort it out, music industry. Last little bit of this colour now. And once that's done, we'll move on to our darkest brown, which is just going to go right at the top of the wing. If there's one bit of advice that I took from Johnny, it's have lots of different shades of brown. Because whilst it is the dullest colour, it is also the one that you're going to be using the most with fantasy miniatures. Because there's leather, there's fur, there's all sorts of things. That require brown. Mud for bases, all that kind of stuff. Okay, what's that brown done? Most time when the jam jam drops to the club. Exactly. Oh god, I'm actually gonna open the window a little bit. I think the You are gonna hear more seagulls, I'm afraid, but I'm sure that's oh yeah, that's that is a nice breeze. I think the sun just came out. Made the flat a little bit hotter. I haven't drinketed rosé since, uh, well, it was in a graveyard after my friend got in a text argument with her boyfriend. This was pre-COVID era good times. <laughs> of course, where else would you drink rosé? The du jour rosé experience. I love rosé. I, I, don't, I don't care. Brown is just dark orange, says Aiden folks. Exactly. And orange is one of the best colours around. Uh, that's actually a little bit brighter, this brown. Let's get a darker one. Let's go for like a a burnt umber, perhaps. Ooh, delicious. It's just a bit more saturated rather than darker. Truth, exactly, yeah. Mid to late 2000s video games industry. Anything around the, uh, the Gears of War era. There we go, that's a nice dark brown. And with this one, we are just going to go to the very top of the wing. So, just this layer here. Did I come out? Nope. A little bit too far off. This is the one I have to be the most careful with, which means it will hurt my wrist the most because I'll be tensing. So, look forward to me moaning about that in a minute. <laughs> Holding my body still. It's very sore for me for some reason. It's meant to move around, you know? Okay. And this is where, again, hitting the headphones. This is where we're going to get our final bit of brown here. Perfect. Ooh, very blustery outside, isn't it? Last bit of brown. So, that is what our final gradient is going to look like when we're all finished. This brown top and then just sort of hangs out from there. I'm wondering if I should sort of build it down a little bit diagonal, but we'll think about that in a minute. 
Hi, Jam. Love and Drasta. Yeah, me too. Fantastic model. It's my first time painting her, but I think it's going pretty well. We're just doing some nice eagle wings for her. Give her more of a Valkyrie vibe. It's like sort of bald eagle colour, isn't it? Maybe I should have made her like Star Spangled Banner colours. That would have been quite funny. And Drasta, the American Spear. It's going to come down a little bit here. So I'm just going to flip this around to make it easier. Okay. Lovely. Nice. At least this layer is very quick because we're only doing a tiny bit of the wing. Just doing a nice gradient. Now, finally, we do the inside of the wing. Probably from about here onwards. And it's almost time to wash. We've spent a lot of time on these wings, but hopefully they're going to look really good at the end. There we go. Just like a nice little border for them almost. Darkest point. There we go. Uh oh. Toto! You jumped jump through the hatch! Yes. Oh, Toto. You just have to be on camera, don't you? Toto's been naughty, isn't my feet? Toto. <laughs> don't you do the little meows? Come on then, do you want to say hi? He has to say hello, don't you? Oh, hello, buddy. Here he is. Someone's making a little fur felt badge of you. In the chat. You were getting talked about, so... It's only right that you get some screen time, huh, bud? But the problem is, because you put your fur everywhere, I'm now going to have fur everywhere on my, mon on my miniatures, which, when you're painting, so -so, it's not very useful. So I'm now going to have to shake it all off me. Oh, hello, Lonies. Hit us up with a joke then. Toto's already run away. No, nope, they're both out. Oh, well, we tried. We tried to keep them away. Look at this. That... Done like gradient wings. Love it. Yeah. Can I marry her? Can you marry her? Yeah. Not yet. She's not finished. Not yet. <laughs> Toriador says Graveyard Rosé sounds like the name of a metal band of soccer moms that don't take itself too seriously. And now that I think of it, I want to see that. Emma Blast says Cat Fur makes all paints texture paints. Exactly. Which is not quite what I want right now, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, we have finally finished the gradient. So, now she's got her bald eagle wings. What we're going to do is, we're going to start washing. So... We're going to get our Agrax Earth Shade, which is our nice brown wash. I'm going to start washing. So we're going to get the big brush one, which is this one. Make sure it's nice and clean. So we don't want anything else on there. We'll put away our small brush as well, so I'll just do a quick wash on that. Someone's messaging me on Slack again. Who's messaging me on Slack? Oh, Rosie, don't you start. Oh, oh, of course it's Lonies with the track with the joke. Thank you, Lonies. Okay, here we go. What should you do if it rains cats and dogs? Try not to stand in a poodle. For God's sake, Lonies. <laughs> Where do you get these things? Is that still out of that book that someone got you? Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Crime to jokes everywhere. 
Right. We have our model. We have our Agrax Earthshade. We're going to get it nice and dipped in because we're going to need quite a lot of it. It's going to work. We'll do the back first. There we go. So I want to brush it away from the white because I don't want it too heavy on the white. But already, look at the amount of detail that it pops up on those feathers. Which is just fantastic, really. It's exactly what you want for this kind of thing. This is where it's all going to start coming together. And again, I don't want it too heavy on the white because we want it to stay a little bit bright. So we're just going to brush it away from there. And we can let it get a little bit heavier as it gets up the up the feather a little bit. And what that'll do is just blend it into the next colour, which is lovely. Exactly what we want. So I'm going to brush it up the feather like that. Like that, and then push it to the side to get the hard edges. Beautiful. Beautiful. We want it nice and strong when we get to this round bit here. So it's going to pick up all those tiny little details. And look at that. Already that wing looks fantastic. Beautiful stuff. Let's do the other ones in the same fashion. Start nice and strong at the top. And just brush it off the white and into the rest of it. That's why they call it make look good water. Because it make look good. And you wait till we dry brush it. It's going to look even better. So again, brush it along the feather, and then bring it to the side to get the hard edges. I have a little bit too much on the brush here, so I'm just going to take some off. Lovely. Look at those wings. Gorgeous. It's a little bit brighter on, on one side than it is on the other, so I'm just going to take it off a little bit on some of this white. Because I want it too bright. don't want it too dark, rather. Opposite. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm really, really, really happy with that. That looks really nice. Very, very happy with that. Okay, let's flip it around. Okay. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, you know when you've been saying, oh yeah, it will look really good for ages, and you're worried that actually what if it doesn't? <laughs> I'm really glad it's actually coming out well. I'm going to be careful not to put too much wash on, because we're going to make it a little heavy, make it a little wet, but as long as it doesn't pull too much, we should be okay. So, again, just wash them off. Just start to pick it up with the brush. Just where it's pulling a little bit too heavily. And you can move it around as well to the bits where it needs a bit more. Oh, fantastic. Kobe Morris, somebody has already made that joke. Thank you very much. <laughs> Angel Beat already said it. 
But yes, I am actually winging it. I'm just sort of making up as I go along, which is usually what I do when I paint. I'm just sort of like, oh, that feels good. That seems like a good choice. And it turns out it was. So it's all good. It's fine. It's a ballsy way to paint, but you know. You get some really nice stuff out of it. There we go. Again, you'll see on the palette where it's like sort of speckling. Because if you, you go quite hard on a wash, then it can flick everywhere. Lovely stuff. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. It's going to look even nicer once we dry brushed it. There's those wings. They look a little bit darker on this side because they're a little bit more, a bit more white on this side than they are on the on the back. But you can see as it dries, and I'll just pick up this pool here. I think that's from the other side. Yeah, just make sure it's not spilling over. As it dries, it's also really good, really really good. I know, that was gorgeous. So we're going to let that dry. We're technically at the end of the stream, but that's fine. I think we'll go on a little bit longer so I can I can let it dry and do the dry brushing. So in the meantime, I'll just paint something else. <laughs> but that is the wonders of Agrax Earthshade for you. As I said, in the meantime, let's get... Let's get her face done. Get her face did. Watch this quickly. <laughs> I see your pun, but actually, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> exactly, nice switch. Oh, well, thank you, Hansel. Eh? You're also bloody sweet, aren't you? Okay, just cap that off. Hello again, Toto. Hello, Buzz. Right. So, and dressed as white, isn't she? Yeah. Let's go. She's a named character, so I might as well do the actual skin tone. Um, I think I'll use Kislev flesh. I think that's my favorite flesh when I've got the... Sit that one. You like a good shake? Fresh Start says, Oh, I've been busy with work. I miss seeing you, Wills. Hope you're doing good, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, we're doing good. We're just sort of uh, finishing up the wings here, but in the meantime, whilst the wash is drying, I'm just going to paint her face. She's got sort of like a pale skin tone. Okay, so faces are very, very tricky because they are tiny, so I need to be quite careful doing this. Problem with faces is it can be quite easy to overload the face a little bit. You lose a lot of the detail, so you want to make sure that you're just pushing the paint around, that it's not sort of pooling anywhere, especially in like the eyes and stuff. if it sticks anywhere you'll just lose all of that detail but she's come out okay here and I'm just gonna give I'm just gonna paint her hair with this color as well so we can get rid of some of the metallic underneath it which make it a little bit easier to paint it the final color I think that brass is actually quite a nice undertone for it because it gives it a little bit more it's a bit less warm than the colour that's already there, so it's a little bit paler, which I think actually works for her her complexion, based on what I've got this picture of her. This bit of her hair is a little bit tricky, because I need to go through... Toto, what are you doing? Every now and again, so Toto loves jumping up onto my PC, so he's a little bit closer to me. Every now and again, though, you'll press the power button and just turn the stream off, which is absolutely terrifying. So I'm going to put a lid over the power button, see if that helps. There's a game that um, 
was on Xbox. You can't come up right now, mate. I'm painting. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go down. Go down. Down to Toto. Toto. Oh, my God. Toto. No. You can't be. Oh, God. You can't be there. Look what you've. What have you done? Oh, my God. Look at him. He's like. <laughs> he's. <laughs> he's trying to sneak into the frame. Right. I need to grab your butt and move you because. Oh. Go on. Go see Zoe. Zoe's got dreamies. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Get a decoy PC. I might have to. We you can get little fake laptops because they like to mirror humans. You can get little fake laptops to convince them they're on a laptop too. Well, we do have a decoy PC. <laughs> He's such a little bugger, isn't he? He's such a piece of shit. Come here. Language, Zoe. Come here. Right. He's off to gay baby jail. Okay. So, again, we need to go through the back of this little bit of armour here. Just to get that part of her head. Which is really, really finicky. Oh, that's a tiny little detail there. All right, cool. So that's her face painted to a sort of generic skin color, generic Caucasian. But we're going to start layering that up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get more of a, maybe a bone white. Squeeze that here. And I'll just blend it with the original skin tone and just start Lightening it up a little bit. John Freeman says that is stunning. The model, not the joke. The, the joke is stunningly bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why she picks him, to be honest, gang. She knows what she's up to. But yeah, we're going to mix these two colours together. I think more of a brighter skin tone. There we go. So it's not all completely one colour. And what I'm going to do is, I have to be super careful doing this, I'm going to do her nose, her eyebrows, a bit of her cheek, uh, maybe her lips, maybe her ear. Oh, balls. God damn it, I got it on the metal. Ah. Damn it. All right, so okay, we managed to wash it off. It's all good. And Drafty, do you have to have such a complicated headpiece around your head? Goodness sake, girl. All right, let's get the water off that brush. <laughs> you didn't know anyone else called it gay baby gel? Absolutely. It's that little meme of the cat in a box from ages ago. Toto's got gay dreamies as well. <laughs> they did a pride pack or something. We call them gay dreamies because they got a rainbow on. Also, Rosie absolutely loves women. She's incredibly sapphic. So we've got very gay cats. There we are. So it's very subtle, but it's just a little bit brighter on the sort of high points of her face. It's just going to make it stick out a little bit more. So now what we're going to do... is going to get our wash brush. We're going to wash her face. But not in the way that normal people wash their faces. We're going to get dirty water and put it all over her. And I'll just get like a slightly smaller brush for this one because we don't want a massive thing. It's just going to soak up too much. And we're going to get Reichen and Flesh Aid, but we're going to get the small one. Because this one is not gloss, so it's actually going to dry matte rather than shiny. And we're just going to wash over her face. The face is a little bit small to really do any proper details on. 
but that's just going to stick under the hair and eye. That's just going to bring out her face a little bit when you look at her. There we go. Lovely. My cats are overloading on gay dreamies this month. <laughs> My boy hates all women unrelentingly. We're trying to raise him to be less misogynistic. Cats are so weird, man. Ah! Oh, you tweet the... Okay, hold on. I do need to see Toto. Alex has finished Toto. Hold on one sec. Uh, there we go. Uh, oh, look at him! <laughs> oh, that's so cute! Oh. oh my god. Toto! He keep right, so in the <laughs> He's being a little bugger in the background. <laughs> Hold on, wait, I'm gonna link that so everyone else can see it, because I don't think anyone else can post links in the chat. He's such a troublemaker. Where is he? He's probably eating biscuits. So there is there's like a serving hatch between the kitchen and the lounge, and Toto keeps jumping through it to try and get get to me and the food. He says my boys have nary a brain cell between them, which I think sums up our cats quite as well as well. Okay, so. With that done, we are going to... Totally trying to end the stream. <laughs> I'm going to grab our small brush again, and we're going to do her hair. And she's just going to have brown hair, I think. Because, oh no, she's blonde, apparently. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I don't do blonde very often, so maybe we'll try some blonde hair. I think I've got like a sandy colour. I guess if we do off-white. I don't really have like a yellowy toned wash, though. Now nah, we're going to do brown hair because I just don't have the stuff for, <laughs> for anything else. Let's go a nice charred brown. Which will actually match the wings, which I think probably makes sense. If her wings match her hair if they're, if they're naturally grown. I don't know if that's a thing or if she's been blessed with them or something, but... It's good to have colours that complement each other. So there we go. Wash on there. She's actually got like a sort of shaved side of her head. So I need to be careful how this tapers off. side now, get the back edge, it does mean that her hair sort of blends into her wings which I think that's quite cool. There we go. I need to be very gentle around here because there's lots of things that I could mess up quite easily which isn't stressful at all. Rosie. Rosie's popped up now to try and mess things up herself. We're getting there late. Okay, cool. She now has brown hair, which is good. But I mean, look, let's face it, all the most beautiful people in the world have brown hair, right? So... Okay. 
She's looking pretty good. So the last finishing touch before we just finish this stream up. I'm just gonna dry brush these wings. So this is where the bright white comes in. But actually, to be honest, now that we've washed the other white, we don't have to go quite solid white, because I think that would actually probably be uh, a little bit strong. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna grab our dry brush. It should be nice and clean as far as I'm aware. Best way to check is if you grab it. So for anyone who's not done dry brushing for this is this is where we sort of work paint into the bristles of the brush. It means that your dry brushes can have quite a lot of paint still on them. So I'm just going to make sure that it's not got too much on there. I just sort of mushing it into some uh, some kitchen roll. That's kind of what these brushes are, are designed for. So it's got a little bit, but not too much. Okay, so <laughs> Oliver Morgan says my cat loves women, but since starting testosterone, he started to bite and scratch me. It's oddly gender affirming, but I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Look, I mean, your cat says trans rights, you know, it's the important thing. Okay, so I'm going to use the bone white. So we're going to grab, oh no wait, bone white or off white? Mm. Yeah, I'll stick with bone white. So I'm going to grab my bone white, I'm going to put it onto my brush, just load it onto the front, uh, like that, and then using the kitchen roll, I'm going to work it into the bristles until barely any paint is coming off, and you can just sort of test it on your skin, it's usually the best way of doing it. To the point where you barely see any come off the brush, honestly. Especially with like a white colour, because that's really strong. So you don't want it to be too too aggressive. And then we're gonna Yeah, there it is. We're gonna work it into the bristles. With these feathers. Oh god. She's being bad in the background. What's she done? On the counter trying to get out the window. Oh god, Rosie. Everyone thinks Rosie's this innocent little cat, but she is the absolute troublemaker of, of this house. She is the one who's always getting into mischief. Toto's actually pretty well behaved, despite what today might seem. There we go. There. So, you've got a literal side-by-side -side comparison here. Um, I'm just going to block the sun on these wings so you can see it a little bit better. It's just picking up all the hard edge details. Now let's look a bit, a bit better on a more focused camera, but I will uh, take a proper picture later. So we're going to grab a bit more paint. And again, we're just going to work into the bristles. Do it on the other side. The lovely thing about dry brushing, for those who haven't used it before, is uh, because there's so little paint on the brush, and because the paint is quite dry, because it's been dried up by smushing into the paper, it only picks up on the hard edges of the model, so you can use it to highlight, basically. So that's just going to pick up on all the bits that we want to pop out. Which on wings is obviously very handy. Lovely. I might use a, a brighter white after this to get a little bit more detail as well. But there she is. Still work in progress, but I think she's looking great so far. Are these uh, Astros, these headphones? Pretty good for Rhapsody Studio. But yeah, look. She's, as I said, still a work in progress, but those wings are looking really nice, I think. I think they really, really tie the model together. Let's try and focus on her so you can get a bit more detail. 
Maybe if I move these, it quite likes focusing on this, the texture of the uh, paint heads. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. There she is. Really just pops out the details on the wings. And once I've got a little bit more bright light on it, you'll probably see the, the dry brushing effect. Let me bring this over here. I wonder if I can just a little bit more of an intense light on it so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. I think she looks great so far. Still a work in progress, but she's looking fantastic. Beautiful. Alrighty, folks. And that's all we're going to have time for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little paint log stream. We do these oh, every two weeks or so. I think this one was uh, a little bit later than uh, than it should have been. But we had some cool things that we wanted to do in the meantime, so they took the, the front step. But as I said, we've got some very, very, very cool videos coming out this week. So please do stick around for more content here on DiceBreaker.com and YouTube.com forward slash DiceBreaker. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Um, it would mean the world to us if you stuck around for some more, uh, more hijinks. Uh, and also, you can now become a member of DiceBreaker Plus, which means you get extra videos, you get... The little badge by your name, like Tristan and Nathaniel Levy have in the chat right now. You get some emotes that you can spam in the chat as well, which is fantastic. Uh, and you can grab that by hitting the join button underneath this very video. Uh, you can also click the bell icon to get notified whenever we put a, new, put a new video live. But we're not just on YouTube, no, my friends. We're also over on dicebreaker.com, where we have uh, all sorts of fantastic articles that go out every day, multiple a day. Thank you, Tristan, for showing off. Um, all sorts of things that you can read up on. In fact, if you watched our video recently on the one that I put out on uh, the biggest RPG in Japan, which is not Dungeons & Dragons, which is on the channel right now. There's a lot of people watching it. Uh, that was originally an article by Matt Jarvis over on DiceBreaker.com. So you can find stuff like that nice and early. Loads of great opinion pieces, interviews, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so go over there and have a look at that. You can also grab, finally, some exclusive merch. Uh, like this drink your paint water mug, which I don't know why I didn't just show it to this camera in the first place over on Dicebreaker.myshopify.com. That's Dicebreaker.myshopify.com. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I will see you on the next one We have got the uh, the live podcast recording tomorrow. So I hope to see you for that. But until then I hope you have a lovely lovely day Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye